Amen. On this beautiful, beautiful and wonderful night here in this place. We're thankful uh, once again to have everybody here. We greet our visitors in the name of Yahusha. And thank you for coming out and hanging out with us. Everyone's looking so beautiful tonight with their white on. Come on, give yourselves a round of, a round of applause uh, on tonight. Uh, I want to just talk to you just for a few moments, but before I do, we want to make sure that we do remember uh, our dear sister Miriam anointing the head and the body of Yahushua Hamashiach, that's whom the world calls Jesus Christ, preparing him to go to the cross for your wicked sins, my wicked sins, and then, beloved, the wicked sins of the world. All praise to the Most High. This is the Holy Feast of Trumpets. Amen. And also, we lift up and celebrate and acknowledge the new moon on tonight. Get, just got a few scriptures for you. I want to touch, uh, touch you real good tonight with just a few scriptures. And uh, we'll be ready to uh, get out of here. We got some refreshments, something to eat on, uh, immediately following our gathering on tonight. And uh, so, come on, man. Let's get into the word. All right. Let's go all the way to, uh, let's get the book of Psalms, chapter number 81 and uh, give me verse 3 and verse number 4 uh, on tonight Psalms number 81 and let's get uh, verse number 3 through verse number 4 give everybody the opportunity to stand to our feet as the reading of the holy word comes out Psalm 81 Verse number three, verse number four. Come on, Ark, what is it? In the book of Psalms 81 and verse three. Uh-huh. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. Blow the holy shofar when? In the new moon. Amen. That's a part of our heritage. And uh, for someone's information tonight, we're in the seventh month. Amen. The seventh new moon on the Hebrew calendar. Amen. What did he say, son? Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. Just blow it up. In, in the, the new moon. Come on, son. In the time appointed. In what? The time appointed. You see, the Most High has a time appointed. The Most High, when he has an appointment with you, don't break his appointment. No. What man will break the appointment that the Most High sets with you? Break your doctor appointment. Mm-hmm. Hmm? Break some other appointments. Sisters, break your hair appointment. Amen. But never break the appointment that you have with the Most High Yah. What can be more important than coming and meeting the Most High Yah? So he has set appointed days throughout the Hebrew calendar year. And those days are called what? Holy feast days. Are they called holidays? No. Are they called holidays, I say? No. What are they called? Holy days. Holy feast days. Amen. So read it out, son, because we got to get together on the new moon and blow the holy shofar. What else did he say? In the time appointed on our solemn feast day. There it is. In the time that's what? Appointed. The Most High sets an appointment with Israel, his people. He want to meet with his people. and That's why we're gathered tonight. All over the world, wherever they're acknowledging the Holy Feast of Trumpets, the Most High is there because he said wherever two or three are gathered in his name, where would he be? In the midst. He said it'd be in the midst. Read it out. Come on, son. Verse 4. Yes. For this is a statue for Israel. Stop. It's a what? A statue. Oh, I don't have to worry about that. Statue. I don't have to do that. Statue. I can do what I want to do. Statue. It's a statue. Amen. It's a law. Praise the Most High. Let me just tell you. It's a commandment. Amen. And the Most High want us to repent in these last days and come back and keep the holy commandments. Amen. Read it one more time, son. For this is a statute for Israel. Yes. And a law of the God of Jacob. Uh-oh. The God of Israel. It's a law. It's a statute Amen. to keep and acknowledge these new moons. These holy feast days, solemn holy feast days, they are appointed. Now let's run over there and tiptoe over there to Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. You may have your seats in the presence of the Most High Yah. Praise the Most High. And while he's getting that, you're looking in and say, man, what were they saying? We were singing uh, Shema Israel. 
Huh? We're talking about the Most High God. You can read about that in Deuteronomy, I think it's chapter 6 and verse number 4. And we had the staff ceremony. They say the staff ceremony, is that in the scripture? We do it in the spirit of praise, worship, glory, and honor to the Father. Amen. And what were we saying? We were saying, Yahuwah, Sabaoth. What does that mean? That means Yahuwah, the Most High, is the King, the Elohim of hosts. Meaning he is the one that uh, has sovereign power, charge over the heavens, over the host of, the host of heaven, which are the angels. Uh-huh. Yahuwah Sabaoth. Amen. That's Hebrew for if we said it in English, uh, you see it in your scriptures written as the Lord of hosts. But we know that he has a name and we call that name Amen. Yahuwah Sabbath. Amen. And we, we, we hear his trumpet sound and we just love to do the staff ceremony and lift up his name and give him praise, glory, and honor. Amen. All right, let's get to it, man. Colossians chapter 2, verse number 16. Come on, king. What did he say? Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Don't let nobody judge you in meat. Come on. Or in drink. In drink, read it. Or in a respect of a holy day. Hold it. In what? In respect of a holy day. You better have respect for y'all's holy days. Amen. You better respect Amen. his holy days. Amen. We were in falsehood. We wasn't respecting the holy days. We was keeping the days of man. But what did he say to do? Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Uh-huh. Or in drink. Come on. Or in respect of a holy day. Don't let nobody judge you because you want to respect holy days. Amen. What else, huh? Or the new moon. Uh oh, don't let nobody judge you. Look down on you because you want to keep the new moon. And let me serve notice on tonight. Most people will rebel against this and keep on rebelling. Amen. Amen. But they can keep rebelling. Let me tell you, if you have to be the only one standing by yourself, Amen. praise the most I got. You stand on the word of the Father. Amen. Let your family judge you. Let your friends judge you. Let all of them judge you. But I want you to know when Yahushua Mashiach come, he going to catch you with some oil in your lamp. Amen. 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 You will have some oil in your lamp. Amen. Amen. The version, the ten versions, amen. Uh, they, they, some of them had oil in their lamp. And some of them didn't have any oil in their lamp. But the ones that had oil in their lamp, that means they was ready for the coming of their Lord. Amen. So when you got oil in your lamp, that is synonymous to say you're keeping his commandments. You're walking upright and holy in the sight of the Father. And therefore, you will gain access to the kingdom. Amen. Are y'all understanding this today? Don't you worry about people. Don't you worry about them. In fact, Yahushua said on one account, he said, woe is you when all men speak well of you. Amen. We just got to acknowledge the truth that we had a culture and a heritage before we showed up down there in 1619 at Jamestown, Virginia. We had a culture. We had, we had, we had holy feast days. We had new moon days. We had days that the Most High gave to us. They are precious in our sight. And just like our forefathers kept it, we got to keep it down. Amen. But you know the Most High, he said he's angry with the wicked every day. Why are you angry with the wicked every day? Because listen, our forefathers, they were wicked. They begin to rebel against the Holy Shabbat. Keep it Sabbath. They rebelled against it. Ezekiel the prophet is recorded in the scriptures whereby he said that. He said, listen, you pollute the Holy Shabbat. Huh? You polluted the Shabbat, therefore I bring you into captivity. Give me that. In the man. book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 12. All right, what did he say there? Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths. Uh, I gave them what? My Sabbaths. Come on now, read to, it. To be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Most High that sanctify them. See, it's a sign between the house of Israel and our Elohim, the Most High Yahuwah. It's a sign that he's what? That he's in covenant. You can go read more about that in Exodus chapter 31 and you will get the fullness of what he's talking about. It is a sign that I'm in covenant with you. Watch this. When you go to Exodus 31, he says it's a perpetual covenant. Amen. Meaning don't stop. Amen. Amen. When you keep this holy feast day of Shabbat, most people don't even know that Sabbath is a holy feast day. You can read about that in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. What did he say, son? Come on. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. We rebelled against our Elohim, 
in the wilderness. Come on. They walk not in my statutes and they despise my judgments. You see, we were just as wicked. And the same thing that was going on with our forefathers back then is the same thing going on right now today. What else? Which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Uh-huh. And my Sabbath, they greatly polluted. Oh, my Sabbath, they did what? Greatly polluted. How, how did they pollute it? Greatly. Greatly polluted it. The Holy Shabbat. You can't go one place where you will find in the Holy Scripture and it be the truth that our people was keeping a Sunday worship. When you read it in the Scriptures, they changed it to the first day. Amen. Somebody did a switcheroo on us and got us believing that Sunday is the holy day. But the Most High said, remember the Sabbath. And do what with it? Keep it holy. Do what with it? Keep it holy. And keep it holy. Jump down to verse number 23. Read it out. Huh? Verse 23. Come on now. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 23. What does it say? I lifted up my, my hand unto them uh -huh. also in the wilderness. Go ahead. That I would scatter them among the heathen. Yes. And disperse them through the countries. Go ahead. Because they had not ex executed my judgments. We didn't execute his judgments. Come on. But had despised my statutes. Despised them statutes. And had polluted my Sabbath. And polluted the Sabbath. Read the book. And their eyes were after their father's idols. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good. Yes. And judges whereby they should not live. Uh-huh. And I polluted them in their own gifts. Yes. And that they caused to pass through the fire all that opened the womb. Uh oh, what was we doing? Grabbing our little babies and causing them to pass through the fire. Offering our babies as a sacrifice to Molech or Baal. Take your beautiful little child and offer your child on the altar of Baal. Burn them, your child alive. You see? That's our forefathers. They was doing some things like that, man. And that's why we down here in the land of our captivity. So make sure you don't worry about nobody uh, looking on you because you respect the whole day. Go right back to what it was. Colossians chapter number 2 and verse number 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Come on. Or in drink. Yes. Or respect of a holy day. You see this? Come or of on. the new moon or of the Sabbath day. Or of the new moon or what else? Or the Sabbath day. What else? Which are a shadow of things to come. It is a shadow of things to come. Come on now. But the body is of Messiah. Yes, yeah, but the body is of the Messiah. So what is it? It is showing you what's coming. It's a shadow of things to come. So as we kick off the fall feast tonight. With the holy feast of trumpets. What is it showing? It's showing that we have a Messiah that's coming. And he, when he's come. He won't be coming with a... Uh, cute little smile on his face. He won't, he won't come soft and tender. He's coming as a warrior. As the Lion of Judah. In the book of Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. All right. What did it say there? And I saw heaven open uh -huh. and beheld a white horse. Yes. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. He that sat upon him was called what? Faithful, Faithful and True. Faithful and True. Faithful. Amen. To what the old prophets have said. Faithful for what he got to do when he come. Come on, son. And in righteousness, he does judge and make war. He what? He judge and make war. No, he going to come and tickle everybody. Judge and make war. He going to tickle your feet. Judge and make war. He going to say, Patty Cake, Patty Cake, Baker's man. Judge and make war. He coming to judge, y'all. And do what? Make war. And make war. Now, go with me quickly. Get me over to uh, Numbers chapter Number 10, I want to show you something. I got just a few minutes tonight. I want to show you something uh, that the Mosai showed me today. And I want to share with you concerning the Holy Feast of Trumpets. Uh, give me chapter 10 out of the book of Numbers. Amen. If you haven't read it before, read uh, Numbers chapter 10 from chapter uh, 10 from the first verse all the way down, beloved, to the 10th verse. But I just want to pull... A couple of verses out and share something with you. Come on, verse 1 and verse 2. Numbers, the 10th chapter, verse 1 and verse number 2. What did he say? In the book of Numbers, chapter 10 and verse 1. Uh-huh. And the most I speak to Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. Make you two trumpets of silver. Read the book. Of whole pieces 
of a, of a whole piece thou shalt make them. Uh-huh. That thou mayest use them for the calling of assembly. So now it's going to tell you what the use of the holy shofar is for. For what reason? The calling of the assembly. When we're calling the assembly to come and gather, a holy shofar, which is the Hebrew word for trumpet, was blown. For what reason? For the calling of the assembly. To call the assembly of Israel to come and gather. Come on, son. And for the journeying of the camps. Hold it. For what reason? The journeying of the camps. For the journeyings of who? The camps. So you see, the camps were set up based on your tribe. Based on your tribe. The tribe of Judah was the largest tribe. But notice what he says. Read that last part one more time. For the journeying of the camps. For the journeys of the camps. So this means that the holy shofar was blown, beloved, when it came time to make a journey, to move from one place to another place. Jump down to 9 and 10. I think it talk about also to make war. Verse 9. Uh-huh. And if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppress you, yes. then you shall blow in the long of the trumpets. Yes, and you, you should, should do what? Blow in the long of the trumpet. Go ahead. And you shall be remembered before the Most High your God. Yes. And you shall be saved from your enemies. All right. What else? Verse 10. Uh-huh. Also in the day of your gladness, in the day of your solemn days, in the beginnings of your month, uh -huh. you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over your sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they might maybe, maybe to you for a memorial before your God. I am the Most High your God. So when we blow the Holy Shofar, we're blowing it to be remembered. It's a memorial. Give me verse 8. One of them says to make war when it's time to go to war. Verse 8. What verse, nine, verse 9. What did he say? And if you go to war That's in your what land. I missed it. Okay, if you do what? Go to war in your if land. If you go to war in your land. Now, we know we're not in our land. We're scattered to the four corners of the earth. Is that right? Amen. But the flip side of that is, the truth be told, is really our land. The whole earth. Because he said he made the whole earth for Israel. So while we're in captivity at the bottom in all of these different societies, the scripture teaches us in 2nd Esther chapter 6, verse number 59, 2nd Esther chapter 7, verse 11, excuse me, verse 10 through 11, that the most I say he made the earth for Israel's sake. The whole earth, he made it for us. So with that being said, if we would be truthful and we got to tell the truth and shame the devil not to lie when we make our journey that was something physical but from a spiritual component you have to make war with your number one enemy your number one enemy I want to inform you today is not Satan your number one enemy is yourself and so the camps, when it was time to move from one place to the next, the holy shofar was blown. Are you listening? And as the shofar was blown, that means it was time to move from one place to the next. Notice in Leviticus, the 10th chapter, the 23rd chapter, to get that, I want to show you this. I'll pull it all together and make it, make it harmonize for you tonight. Leviticus chapter number 23, and pick it up at verse number 23. Leviticus 23 verse 23. Uh-huh. And the most I spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, in the first day of the month. Now, the seventh month on the Hebrew calendar is called Ethanim. Ethanim. Can y'all say that? Ethanim. Say it again. Ethanim. One more time. Ethanim. Ethanim is the seventh month on the Hebrew calendar. That's the month that we're currently in. We're in the month of what? Ethanim. Ethanim. Come on, son. Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, uh -huh. shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. That's right. What verse is that? 24. Okay, get me down to uh, when you're going to the Holy Feast of, of uh, Atonement, the Day of Atonement. Get me down. That's what I want. Verse 26. Is that it? They talk yeah. about the tenth on the tenth day. Yes, the twenty-six. Read it, son. And the most I spake unto Moses, saying, "Also on the tenth day of the seventh month." Also on what? The tenth day of the seventh month. Also on the tenth day of what month? Seventh. Of the seventh month, and the seventh month is called what? Ethanim. The seventh month is called what? Ethanim. It's called Ethanim. So on the tenth day, so we blow the holy shofar on the first day of the month. 
which means there is a new moon which brings us into the beginning of the new moon month or the new month eating them but something happens when you get to the 10th day read it again also on the 10th day of the seventh month there should be a, a day of atonement there shall be what a day of atonement a day that we repent as a nation today the most i put something on my heart if our number one enemy is not satan but rather ourselves if on the first day the holy shofar is blown and then 10 days later we are to come into the day of atonement the most i said that matches exactly how many of my people are going to be actually saved out of Israel? It's going to be one third. Ten is one third of a 30 day month. But watch this. As we are journeying, as we journey from one place to the next, we must make sure that from the first day we are checking inventory of our own selves. We have to journey. From where you are, what sin do you have in your life tonight? What commandments are you breaking tonight? You know, and you know the most, holy, the most I know. You got to make a journey out of the way of sin. And journey on to the island of truth. Make your journey, beloved. Because when we come into the 10th day, the day of atonement, this is the day that you're supposed to start giving up everything that you know is not right. Will you make a journey from the island of deception, the island of rebellion, the island of sin? Will you make a journey and get off of that island and then journey to the island of repentance? To allow every yoke and stronghold to be broke in your life. This is why he, this is one of the reasons why the trumpet is blown. It is to acknowledge that the time now have come for us to come out of whatever we've been in. That don't line up with the scriptures. Make the journey, beloved. Come on out of it. And as you come out of it, you bring your repentant heart into the day of atonement. The whole web whereby the whole house of Israel repents. And now and only then is the Mophite now ready to meet us during the Feast of Tabernacle because we've been washed and purified, we clean by the blood of Yahushua. Go to second, go to second Corinthians, our main case, give me chapter 10 there and pick it up there, verse number three through verse number five. Make haste, man. We got a little bit of time here. In the book of second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Uh oh, though we walk in the flesh, we don't war. We, you cannot flesh. fight a spiritual battle with natural things. Mm -hmm. That's all he's saying. You don't war after the flesh with the flesh. You got to use something spiritual because on the inside of us, meaning down in our soul, down in our spirit, we are spirit. You are a spirit and I am a spirit. What is man? Man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives where? In a body. Are y'all understand? Read it out. For we walk, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Yes. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. Are not what? Carnal. Amen. You can't you can't bring a little knife, man, to a spiritual fight. Mm -hmm. The weapons of our warfare is not of this world. But mighty through God. But through, mighty through who? Through God. The, listen, the weapons of our warfare, what well, we got to bring, beloved. They're mighty. We, they mighty. You got to bring the word of Yah. The word of Yah will cut deep to a place where you cannot go. Huh? The word of the Most High is able to go down on the inside and perform spiritual surgery down to the core of our being. But you must have a repented heart. And be ready to meet the father to make that journey to which he says he's going to pull down every stronghold. Read it out, son. Put to the put, put, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. To the what? To the pulling. Take it up at the top of the verse. Take your time, son. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God. But they are mighty through the most high Yah. To the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Of strong. What's that thing that's strong? That's a stronghold in your life. Maybe you're weak and fasting. It's a stronghold. 
Huh? Maybe you smoke cigarettes, cigarette smoker, cigar smoker, alcohol guzzler. What is it, brother, sister? Is it pornography? What is it? That thing strong in you and leading you. Maybe you don't, you don't, you, you, you run from the word of Yah. You don't spend time in his word. That's a stronghold there. Because you give attention to everything else except the thing that you really post. Listen, when you get into the word of the most, I understand you're spending time with your creator. Huh? The Holy Scripture said that his word is powerful. Huh? It's sharp. Than any two-edged sword. Dividing asunder what? The soul and the spirit. Why did it say it divides asunder the soul and the spirit? Because the most I know the unclean spirits can dwell right there. So he got to divide asunder the soul and the spirit to expose the unclean spirit. Let the word of Yah cut them. Let the word of the Father touch them. Let me show you. To give me Matthew. Make haste, man. Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 8. Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 8. Let me show you how powerful the word of the Father is. Read it out, huh? In the book of Matthew 8 and verse 8, uh -huh. the, the centurion answered and said, Master, I am not worthy that I am not worthy that thou should come into, under my roof. Come on now. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Did you hear this? Do what? Speak the word only. Do what? Speak the word only. All he's asking for is Yahushua to do what? Speak the word only. If you speak the word, what's going to happen? And my servant shall be healed. Did you hear this? Speak the word. That's why you got to get in the word. When you get in the word, the word is being spoken to you. And my servant shall what? Be healed. Get me down to the verse 16. Read it out. Huh? Verse 16. Come on now. When the evening was come. They, when the evening was come. Listen at the book. They brought unto him many that were possessed with devil. They brought many that was what? Possessed with devil. That was what? Possessed with devil. Come on, son. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And what did he do? Cast out spirits with his word. He cast out the spirits with a tambourine. His word. He cast out the spirits with a with a drum. Word. He cast out the spirit with his shofar. With his word. He cast out the spirits with his word. With Come his on, word. man. With his word. See? The word of the Father is powerful, quick and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder the soul and spirit to the joint and marrow of bone, and is a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. Hebrew chapter 4, verse number 12. It is what it is. And what it is, is the truth. Mm -hmm. You got to make the journey now. Don't ever get relaxed, brothers and sisters. Don't, I say it again, don't ever get relaxed. In that thing that you know is leading you from the most high. Hmm? Do you spend too much time looking on the television? What are you looking at on the television, brothers and sisters? Are you looking and bringing your eyes upon unclean things? Huh? Think on it now. You got to make the journey. In the book of Amos chapter 6 of verse 1. It says what? Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. You see this? Woe to them that are what? At ease in Zion. That are at ease in Zion. See? Taking things relaxed. In a relaxed posture. Relaxed in it. No. Sin will send you to hell fire. Sin all of us dead. The most, it won't be no excuse. I gave you my only begotten son. I gave you the blood of that unspotted lamb. He was the lamb of redemption, the lamb of reconciliation. He came as the lamb of Yah. I gave him to you for you to believe on him. No man come to the Father except through me, says Yahusha. So we have him. We have his blood that came down flowing down out of his body when they crucified him. So he gave us his son. He gave us the blood of his son. He gave us his everlasting word. Then he said, I will then empower you and baptize you and immerse you with the power of the Ruach HaKodesh to empower you to run this race until the end. I want to know tonight which one of you here tonight or maybe you're looking in social media wise. Which one of you are you going to make the journey? Or are you going to stay on that island of deception and simply just perish? Think on it now. You got to make the journey.
the holy shofar is being blown. I want you to know when we blew the holy shofar, the angels of heaven, they blow the shofar. Huh? Let's go get uh, first Kings now. Give me first Kings. Give me first Kings. I got two scripts and we're going to close. First Kings, man, chapter eight. Make haste. First Kings chapter eight. Give me down to verse one through verse six. I want to read through this and uh, read it. And then I want you to go home and read it yourself. Meditate on the word day and night, as the Holy Scripture say. What did he say? In the book, of, in the book of First Kings, chapter eight, beginning of verse one. Yes, sir. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel uh -huh. and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the father of the children of Israel. He assembled who? The chief of the fathers of the children of Israel. So he, so Solomon, is there at the night or the day of dedication. It is the Feast of Trumpets. Let's get some understanding of our true history now. This is history. On the first day of the month of Ethanim. This is when Solomon completed the temple. And now he's dedicating the temple back to the Mosiah. Before the whole house of Israel. All of our people were there. Read it son. Pick it up at verse 1 from the top. Read it out through verse Solomon 6. Assumed All the verses out as you go along. Come on. First Kings 8 and verse 1. Uh huh. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel. Sure did. And all the heads of the tribe. Come on, man. The chief of the fathers of the children of Israel. Yes. Unto King Solomon in Jerusalem. Uh huh. That they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant. That they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant. Read it. Of the Mosa out of the city of, of David, which is in Zion. Which is where? Which is Zion. Just learn that. The city of David is Bethlehem. The city of David is Bethlehem. Where our king Yahushua Mashiach was born, and it also takes on another name. What do they call it? Which is Zion. Which is what? Zion. Which is Zion. Read the book. Verse 2. It says what? And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king Solomon. They sure did. At the feast in the month of Ethanim. At the feast and the month of what? Ethanim. Okay, this is the seventh month. We together. Everybody understand? Which is it? the seventh month. This is the seventh month. Verse 3. On the first day of that month, they will blow the holy shofar. They gather. Solomon is now has, has now completed building the temple that the Most High Yah will dwell in and reign in. Okay, this is this is the backdrop. Continue to read it. Verse three it says what? And all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the ark. Uh huh. They took up the ark. Verse read four. It. And they brought up the ark of the of the Most High. Uh huh. And the tabernacle of the congregation. Yes. And all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. Yes. Even those even though did the priests and the Levites bring up? Right, because. The tabernacle was temple was a temporary setup. They would set up the tabernacle. And all of the furnishings of the tabernacle, the Levitical priesthood, they was in charge of that. Now there's a switch. There's a switch from a, a temporary house that the Most High would dwell in. Huh? Now there's going to be something permanent where? At Jerusalem. And he's dedicating that temple at Jerusalem. Read it out, huh? And King Solomon, all the congregation of Israel that were assembled, verse 5. Uh -huh. And King Solomon, all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him, yes. were with him before the ark, sure was. sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be told nor numbered for the multitude. So they sacrificed sheep and oxen. It was so many of them, you couldn't even number them. That's how huge the sacrifice was. He probably sacrificed thousands of sheep and oxen on that day. It's speculation. I can't say for sure how many, but just know there was a lot of them. Go ahead, son. Verse 6. Verse 6 says what? And the priest brought in the Ark of the Covenant uh -huh. of the Mosai in his place. He until brought in, in the place. Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant carried the everlasting word of the Father. And now we got we to gotta take the word of the Father and bring it out from the, from the tabernacle amongst the furniture and place it in the temple that Solomon built. Are y'all with me today? What verse is that? I'm still, in, I'm still in verse 6. Read it. And to the oracle of the house, to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubim. Uh-huh. Come on. Verse 7. seven. No, give me down to 10 and verse 11. Verse 10. Come on. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy, holy place. Uh-huh. When the, the priests come out of the holy place, read. That the cloud filled the house of the Most High. Now watch this now. At the dedication of the temple. In the month of Ethanim, the seventh month, the house of Israel is there. 
Now watch what happens. Read it one more time. Verse 10 says what? And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place. Yes. That the cloud filled the house of the Most High. That the cloud filled up the house of the Most High. Yeah. Come on, son. So that the priest could not stand to minister before the, before the cloud. The, in other words, the, word, the glory of the Father filled the temple on the day of, of the temple being dedicated. That right there is a similitude of the Most High filling us now as the temple with the spirit of the Most High. Y'all to baptize you with the Ruach HaKodesh. Amen. That's a similar tool right there. Read it out. For the glory of the, for the, glory of the Most High has filled the house of the Most High. Uh-huh. Come on. Verse 12. Yes. This makes Solomon this makes Solomon. Verse 11. Verse, verse 11. So the priest could not stand to minister. Did you see this? When the glory of the Most High filled the temple. No need for human flesh now to do anything. Huh? Because there's a work of power that's going to that's gonna be translated within you, me, and anybody else. When he fill you with the temple. Listen, the glory of the Father filled the temple so in so much that the priests, the ministers couldn't even stand up to say one thing. They ain't need one thing. Why? Because the Most High announced himself in that temple. Are you understanding? Read it out, son. So that, so that the priest could not stand to minister yes. because of the cloud. Because of the cloud. For the glory of the Most High had filled the house of the Most High. Sure did. You got that? Listen That's verse 11? Yes. Jump down and get 47. 1 Kings 8 and 47. Come on, read it out. Keep going down to verse number 49. One more time. What did he say? Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land where they were captured. If they captive, shall bethink themselves. All of this is one single event. On the first day there of the seventh month, the month of Ethanim, at the dedication of the temple. What did he say? Yeah, they shall bethink themselves in the land where they were carried captives. Uh-huh. And repent and make supplication unto, unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives. Yeah. Saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. Did you see this? At the dedication of the temple, Solomon says that if we will bethink ourselves, that means come to ourselves and repent. Return back to our true heritage and culture and come back and keep the, co the covenant. There was a prayer already lifted up on our behalf. If we bethink ourselves, come on son, where? In the land where they were carried captives. That's why we're here tonight. That's why we're coming back to the feast days. That's why we're coming back to keeping the holy Shabbat. Because we have now bethought ourselves. We have bethink ourselves. We bethink ourselves in the era that we were in. Now we are, we are now ready to return back to the covenant to walk with the Father. Come on, son. When they were carried captives uh -huh. and repent and make supplication to thee in the and land. And repent and do what? Make supplication. Make uh, supplication. Come on, son. Unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives. In the land of the one that carried us or brought us here captives. Come on. Saying we have sinned and done perversely. Yeah, we have sinned and done perversely. Read it. We have committed wickedness. We committed wickedness. Verse 48. Uh-huh. And so return unto thee with all their heart. That's what we got to do. I told you, you got to make the journey. You got to make the journey off of the island of deception. Come and stand firm on the island of healing. Calling them strongholds to be pulled down. And every high thing to come to exalt itself against the knowledge of the Father. Do you understand this? There are things that's going on in the world. Perhaps in your life. That comes to exalt itself against the knowledge of the Father. The knowledge of the Father is the truth of Yah. Huh? The knowledge of the Father, I say, is the truth of Yah. And if that thing comes into your life. It is trying to remove you and separate you from the truth of the Most High. Because the scripture said that the truth shall make you what? Free. And he, and he whom Yahushua have set free shall be what? Free indeed. But you got to make the journey. Amen. Listen, listen. 99.9 .9 is not good enough. Did you hear that? The Most High said, be you perfect. Ain't that what Yahushua said? Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 5 verse 40. Be you perfect. Even as my father which art in heaven is what? Perfect. Ephesians the fourth chapter says that all of us have to come up to the measure. Have to come up to the measure of Hamashiach. Make the journey beloved. Got to make the journey. What, what verse is that? Verse 48. Come on read 48. Read quick. 
and shall return unto thee with all their heart and That's with right. all their soul in the land of the in the land of their enemies. That's right. Which led them away captive uh -huh. and pray unto thee toward the land and pray toward our land. Which thou this is why we turn east because our land is east. Which way is east? You get up in the morning, beloved. Every time you see that sun shining a bit, you find where that sun at, and you turn in that direction and call on the name of Yahushua Mashiach. The other nations don't got to do this, but we got to do it. We have to do it because we're the ones in captivity. Solomon makes this prayer. What did he say? Read that again. And so return unto thee with all their heart uh -huh. and with all their soul. That's right. In the land of their enemies. In the land of their enemies. Which led them away captive. That's right. And pray unto thee toward their land. Now watch this now. This is around 940, 940 years before the Messiah even came. Somebody said, well, uh, we don't have to do that. Uh, use a lion. You got to turn east toward the sun. We say, well, we can find that. Uh, let's go to Dan. Let's pull that precept in real quick. Daniel chapter 10, I believe it's verse number 6. Make haste. Let's show you what the prophet did. And the scripture says, oh you, uh, uh, oh, you that slow of heart, oh, foolish and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have said. Come on, man. Daniel, I think it's chapter 10. Uh, pick it up there in verse 6. I think that's what we want. In the book of Daniel, chapter... Chapter 10. Pick it up there in verse... Is that verse 12 we want? Or is it chapter 6? Let's see if it's chapter 6. This one, Darius. Why is that? We need that priest. In, in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, of verse 10. Verse 10. That's what we want. Come on. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed. Now, Daniel was a man of y'all that walked up a holy prophet. And some sneaky fellas. Can you say sneaky fellas? Some sneaky fellas came against Daniel by going to the king because they knew Daniel was a man of prayer. He prayed three times before the Most High Yah. And so they went and got the king to sign off that for 30 days no man, woman, boy, or girl in Babylon could be found praying. And if you were found praying, you would be thrown to the lion. And they had that thing sealed and it became law of the land that over the next 30 days, if you're caught praying, you're going, you're going to be in some big, big trouble. But Daniel, the man of the father, the holy prophet here, listen there, 940 uh, B.C., that's when Solomon was on the earth doing this thing. So about 400 years down the road, Daniel is on the earth doing what the father called him to do. And what did he do? Read it out, huh? Now, in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10. It says what? Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. And sure did. And his windows. See, when he knew that it now was law of the land that nobody could pray uh, for uh, 30 days. Come on, son. He, he went to his house and in his windows being opened in his chamber. Yes. Toward Jerusalem. Uh oh Ooh. His window was open. He wasn't even scared. Most fellas would have just closed the window. I don't want nobody to hear me praying. His, he left his window open. And when he went to the window, it was towards his land. He's practicing what he knew Solomon had prayed back there in 1 Kings the 8th chapter. When you pray, turn towards your land. Read it out. And he kneeled upon his knees three times a day. Oh, forgive me. Now, Daniel, now, when Daniel knew that his writing was signed, yes. he went to his house and his yes. windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. And his chamber, his window was open toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three he times a day. He kneeled upon his knee three times a day. And prayed. And did what? Prayed. And prayed. And gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. Do you see that? Go right over back over there to 1 Kings chapter 8. Let's close out right there. 1 Kings 8 chapter. Come on, son. In verse 48. All right. And so return unto thee with all their heart. Return unto thee with all thy heart. And with all their soul. And all thy soul. In the land of their enemies. In the land of our enemies. Which led them away captive. Yes, sir. And pray unto thee toward the land. That's right. Which thou gave unto their fathers. Uh-huh. The city which thou hast chosen. And the house which I have built for thy name. Yes. What verse is that? 48. Amen. All praise to the most high, Yah. So in these last days, beloved, we thank the Father for the holy feast of trumpets. 
We remember when the seven priests on the seventh day blew the shofar at Jericho. And what happened? The walls came down. Just like they uh, blew their shofar. And also they gave a loud shout. And what happened? The walls came down. The same thing is going to happen where we are held captive all over the world. All over the world. The walls will come down. On the, at that last day, at the last trump, the Holy Scripture says, huh? Uh, the archangel is going to shout loud. And then it says, the trump of God. Then the dead in Christ is going to rise first. Amen. And if you're in Christ, Yahushua and Mashiach, you're going to rise first if you now perish to go on to be with the Father out of this life into the next life. All praise to the Most High Yah. All right, at this time, uh, let's go ahead on and we'll go ahead on it because this is the night of the new moon. Praise the Most High. We'll lift up a burnt sacrifice uh, according to a sweet savor of frankincense. Where's my frankincense? Here we go, right here. All praise to the Most High. We'll sit it out right here in front of everybody. And we are lighted tonight. Now, before we light it, if you don't know Yahushua, Hamashiach, King of Glory, <clears throat> repent of your sins. Let's make that journey, beloved, off of the island of deception and make the full journey on to the island of salvation, the island of repentance, as we prepare our heart, mind, and soul for uh, the coming of the Day of Atonement. All praise to the Most High, September the 28th, 10 days from today. If you don't know Yahushua now, you're ready to repent. If you believe in him as the son of the living Elohim, if that's you, and you want to repent of your sins, then go down in water. Praise the most high. Dial at number 301-232-8668 is the telephone number. All right, let's stand to our feet. Before we pray, we are like... We send up a burnt offering, a sweet savor in this nostril of the holy, the holy frankincense myrrh on tonight. And we are grateful that on the new moon, the gates of heaven is open. And Yah, our Father, he receives this sweet savor in his nostrils. Even as Revelation in the 8th chapter said that the smoke ascended upwardly and it came up with also the prayers of the saints. Amen and amen again. Bow your head. Let's have a word of prayer as we turn towards our land, beloved. Father, in the name of Yahushua, once again, we are here before your presence. You said in your word that if my people but you're called by my name. If they will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, I will forgive their iniquity. I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. So tonight, Father, we're asking for healing where someone might be broken in spirit, torn in their soul, Wherever they are, Father, we know our oh, but none is too far from you because you said in your word that your arm is not short, that it cannot reach down to save. Save on tonight. Somebody, maybe they're struggling, Father, with cigarettes. Maybe they're struggling smoking weed. Maybe someone has a problem, they eat too much. Whatever it may be, Father, maybe someone have a Show on the TV that's wicked in your sight and they're, they're hooked on that particular show. We thank you tonight that you are above all, able to do all. And as, our, as your holy prophet Jeremiah said, there's nothing too hard for you. As we prepare ourselves out to come into the holy day of atonement, prepare our minds, wash us thoroughly. Break and destroy yokes, chains, and strongholds out of our lives. That we will be before you, Abba, pure and holy and upright. 
in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach. If one be someone, if there's someone that's hindering us, they become a stumbling block. We pray tonight that you will remove them out of our lives as we drive, O oh Father, and strive to keep your holy commandments. We pray tonight, Father, believe you because you cannot lie. You are the spirit of truth. We trust in you and you told us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Oh, hallelujah. But you will condemn every tongue that rise against us. You told us in your word that you have carved Israel into the palms of both of your hands. Work on us, O Abba. We yield ourselves to you. We thank you now, Father, that even before we arrive home tonight, by the time we finish this prayer, you would have broken something in our lives in the name of Yahushua. We thank you for the right hand of your power. Deliverance set free for your glory, for your honor. As we praise you and glorify you and magnify you, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy as we ask it all tonight in the name of Yahushua. Hamashiach, and together we all said amen. 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 Amen, amen. amen again. Amen. All praise to the Most High. Kwam Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala. Hallelujah. 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 Whatever this I have for benediction, now may the sweet communion of the Ruach Kokodash. May he rest, rule the Bible, and then it's now, henceforth, and forevermore. And together, the children of Israel all together said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to you now.